Well, what other kind of unique issues do you run into when fixing a back problem? Um, aside from the medical problems, such as you know diabetes, heart problems, uh, things that make surgery more of a, a concern. Um, the problems that we typically see in people that have had previous spine surgery uh, are usually the rule of threes again. Uh, one is patient expectations. You know, did they really, did, was the surgery done well? Did the surgeon accomplish what he planned on doing? Which usually is true, uh, but the patient may have expected too much from it. You know, that, that there wasn't that verbal contract of what I think you will, will happen and what will occur after the surgery. Um, that's not real common, but it does happen. Uh, other issues usually boil down to uh, either they had a fusion and they didn't fuse, or they have uh, some problem with residual compression. Uh, the um, fusions is where we actually get two bones to grow together, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but just because you do a fusion doesn't mean it occurs. It's, it's actually a biologic process that takes time. And we all know how growing things are. They tend to do it as they darn well please. Uh, fusions are the same way. Just because I've had patients say, well, my surgeon did a fusion. And then you look at their studies and realize that, yeah, he did do a fusion, but you didn't fuse. Uh, so you know that's one of the problems that you see with failed spine surgery. Uh, and one of the problems that you also think about when you do first-time surgery. Uh, the other problem is, is that was, did they get decompressed? In other words, you know, pain, nerve compression pain, and I'm meaning pain down the leg or pain down the arm, uh, uh, is caused typically by compression, some type of mechanical compression, uh, whether it's bone spurs, whether it's disc, whether it's ligaments or whatever. Uh, so when we do uh, decompression, we are essentially trimming and removing bone, trimming and removing disc to decompress the nerve. Uh, just because you do a decompression doesn't mean it's always enough. And that's not the surgeon's fault either, necessarily. Uh, we have, uh, we're sort of limited on how much decompression we can do in a spine. You know, it's put there for a reason. All those structures were there to help with the stability of the spine, so it's not like they're, you know, irrelevant. Uh, but we know from history and from studies and from basic research that we can take out a certain amount of structures in the spine and the spine will still be stable. Uh, so that's typically where we stop. Uh, sometimes, however, patients have compressions that require us to remove more. And that wasn't done for fear of making the spine unstable, so the patient can still have residual compression from their surgery. Uh, the last reason is the scar issue. You know, people talk about, well, it's scar tissue. The doctor told me it's scar tissue. Uh, scar tissue is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Uh, that's how uh, we heal. Everything in your body heals by scar tissue except bones. Bones actually are the only tissue in your body that heals without scar. So when you have an incision done for a hernia or when you have any kind of surgery, uh, any kind of incision, a cut, or uh, suturing or sewing together, there's always a scar that develops. And the same thing's true in the spine. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It, it always is there. Uh, the scar tissue we're talking about as spine surgeons are concerned about is scar tissue within the nerve itself, uh, intraneural scar. And uh, you can't see that very well in studies. We know it's there. We know from animal studies that it's there. And that's the kind of scar tissue that um, another surgery won't help. That's the kind of scar tissue that can give people chronic problems with pain, too. Thankfully, that's not very common. Uh, and uh, those are the kind of folks that there are other treatments for rather than perhaps a, a formal spine surgery.